Asden was kind enough to send over two of their shotgun microphones so I could show them to you. They are letting me keep the microphones, but I'm not otherwise compensated, and they have no editorial input. What was that? What's happening, Booth Junkies? Mike Delgadio here, back with another video on home studio setup for voiceover. Yes, yes. Today, we're going to take a look at a pair of microphones from Asden. These are the SGM 3500 series of shotgun microphones, and we're going to be looking at them from a voiceover perspective. Can you use them for voice work? That's what we hope to find out. Asden was kind enough to send over two of the shotgun microphones so I could show them to you. They're letting me keep the microphones, but I'm not otherwise compensated. They have no editorial input on what I say, and they will not see this video before you. And anyway, I just really want to show you how the mic sounds so you can decide if they're right for you. Okay? Let's get into it. There are two microphones in the SGM 3500 lineup. There is the SGM 3500, which is a super cardioid microphone, and the slightly longer SGM 3500L, which is a bit longer and a hypercardioid pattern. The pattern of the L version being hypercardioid will have the most rejection of unwanted sound coming from the sides. Whereas the shorter version, being supercardioid, may be ever so slightly more natural sounding, especially when used indoors. But I expect that in a voiceover situation where we are right in front of the mic in a well-treated room, that there won't be a significant difference. But you do need to stay absolutely locked in front of the longer version. While the shorter version has a, a greater degree of freedom to move, but won't reject quite as much sound from the sides. Both would be very good in a voiceover situation or in a typical YouTube talking head situation. When you're searching for shotgun microphones, you may come across varying opinions on whether you should use shotgun microphones indoors. My friend Alan over on the Sound Speech channel just the other day did a great job of illustrating how shotgun microphones perform indoors and all the different ways that you might place a shotgun microphone to optimize or adjust the sound, to capture the sound in a filmmaking scenario. Um, I'll have a link over to his video in the description. It's super educational and it's worth checking out, especially if you're looking for shotgun microphones for filmmaking in addition to voiceover. The difference between the supercardioid and the hypercardioid mics in our case, I think it matters a whole lot less in the voiceover world, especially as you improve your acoustic treatment to deaden the reflections of your voice off the various surfaces. And the mic is really close to your mouth, rather than several feet away as you might have in filmmaking. For the most part in voiceover, we are close to the mic and we hardly move. We're, we're pretty stationary in front of the mic. So as long as there is sufficient acoustic treatment, like I have in my booth here, you have a, a greater freedom in the mics that you can choose. Looking at the specification sheet for the two Asden microphones, you can see where the main difference is between the two. If we look at, the free, at both the frequency response graph and the polar pattern graph, you can see that the sensitivity at 90 degrees off axis, or from the side, is considerably less for the L version than the shorter version. In other words, if there is sound approaching the mic from the side, it'll be quieter. Whether that sound is direct from something like your computer fan, or reflections of your voice off the walls to either side of you. Looking at the dotted line, we can see that at 90 degrees, or talking into the side of the mic, that the L version rejects the sound by about 10 dB or so more than the short version. So that is what might help you make your decision when choosing between the two. The short version has some advantages. It is physically less imposing and can work well for a neutral sound, and it does give you greater freedom to move around in front of the mic, while the longer version will be slightly more forgiving of a less than perfect acoustic space. In a well-treated booth like this, 
The supercardioid is probably the right choice, but in an untreated room or lightly treated room, or where you might also use the mic outside, the hypercardioid longer version is probably what you want. But in either case, always remember that the sound emanating from the noise source is also bouncing off the walls and reverberating around. Even in a well-treated acoustic space like a booth, there's still a desk and monitors and even me that is reflecting sound from the source into the mic. So you can't completely eliminate the noise. You're just trying to reduce it as much as you can so that your voice is significantly louder than the noise source. The response graph shows that both microphones have a very significant presence boost, starting from about 6K with about 6 decibels of boost at 7K. You can hear it in the response. It adds a ton of clarity. As you listen to my voice, judge that if that high frequency boost is helping. Presence boost like this is common in microphones, and it can go wrong, where instead of sounding crystal clear or bright, it can sound like broken glass or a needle in your ear, for lack of a better description. I'm interested in your feedback on, on what you think about these. Now, this is a choice that the, that the manufacturer makes to add that presence boost or not, and it can flatter some voices while not being so favorable to others. In particular, if you have a very bright S sound or an S sound that whistles, these mics might not be the best choice because it will enhance frequencies that you probably are going to reduce after the fact anyway. So if you do have a very sibilant voice or a super, super sharp S sound, the Deity S mic or the S mic 2S those might be better choices. But for deeper voices that need clarity, the SGM3500 might be just what you're looking for. In either case, no matter which you choose, they should both sound excellent. So long as you stay in the sweet spot of the polar patterns, you should be fine. Now, the directionality of shotgun microphones can also have an impact on the bass response or how bassy your voice may sound. This is called the proximity effect. And generally speaking, into a more directional, the more directional a mic is, the stronger the proximity effect can be. So I'll show you this by getting close to both mics so that you can see what the proximity effect is. Both of the Asden mics are equalized to overcome this effect to some extent. There is a, a natural roll off in the frequency response curve. It looks to be about 60 hertz and lower where the mic just becomes a whole lot less sensitive. So as I get close to the mic, we can see that if there's a significant difference in the tone, sure, it'll get louder, but do I get bassier? Some mics get bassy in a way that sounds really good, and sometimes it can get bassy in a way that sounds really muddy. Now, sometimes when you're voice acting, you might want to get incredibly close to the mic to give a sense of intimacy or to add power to your delivery. And having a microphone that will sound good when you're super close, that's what we want. They both come in hard-sided plastic shell cases and come supplied with a foam clown nose or a windscreen that is intended to help reduce wind noises and plosives to some extent. They also come with uh, rigid clips that provide no shock protection. Now, this is pretty standard. Even my $1,000 MKH416 only came with a rigid clip and a foam clown nose. But the clip and the filter are two aspects that I would change out anyway. I strongly recommend the uh, Rycote shock mount. Um, and I also really, uh, I really prefer the Hook Studio pop filter, which slides right onto the microphone. I'll have links in the description. From a build quality perspective, these are excellent. Just excellent microphones. And the warranty on the mics is a full 10 years. So Asden stands behind their products and you can use them confidently. They expect you to use these microphones for years. They even supply the tested frequency response for your specific mic in the box. So you can get a sense of exactly how your mic tests out. Now, I get a lot 
of mics, and not every mic provider provides this chart. It's a nice touch, and it speaks to the professional grade of these microphones. Finally, uh, these mics are made in Japan. The fact the box says handcrafted in Japan with made in Japan on the box. This indicates where they are manufactured, and it's not the more weaselly designed in wherever, but made in China, like we saw in a recent mic review. Okay, I'm going to switch in a number of other mics and use them in a voiceover style so that you can get a sense of how they sound compared to the Astons. This will just give you a sense of the overall response and quality. First, and this isn't really a fair comparison, but we'll start with the Samson CO2. Now, this is a kit that comes with a pair of microphones and will set you back around $130. And as far as I know, these only come in a pair. So they're around $65 a piece. They're actually not bad mics, but the big knock for me is the underlying noise that pervade these microphones. These are also a cardioid pattern, according to the Samson website, and therefore they will be somewhat less forgiving if you lack acoustic treatment. The Samsons are fine as entry-level mics, and now that you've heard how they compare to the pro-level Asdens. There you go. Now I have another Asden mic in place. This is the SGM-250 a more affordable shotgun mic in the Asden lineup, and will run you around $230 at the time I'm making this video. Even though it's longer, like the L version of the 3500, this one is a super cardioid pattern, like the shorter 3500. This mic has a couple of distinguishing factors that separate it from all the other mics that we'll take a look at. The SGM-250 has a switchable low-cut filter, that starts to cut off the bass frequencies at about 160 hertz at 3 decibels per octave. So a nice gentle roll off. Nice. The other really cool feature here is that this mic can also be battery powered. So even if you don't have a phantom power supply at hand to power the mic, just drop in a AA battery. It also comes with a low profile shock mount that integrates well with a hot shoe on a camera. This mic is really well suited for run and gun style videography, like news gathering. Next up, we'll compare the Octava MK12 Film Edition. This is a hypercardioid mic, but is in a shorter form factor. Octava provides this in a, a in this kit a physical high pass filter. You actually have to unscrew the capsule, screw the high pass filter into place, and then screw the capsule back on. Right now, you're hearing this with the high-pass filter out and the Hook Studios um, pop filter. So you can assess whether the bass response is appreciably different between the two. I have the filter in place because this is easy to, to send plosives into. And now I have the high-pass filter in. So the Octava MK12 kit is made in Russia. Uh, the Octava is also a, a nice sounding mic, and you'll find a lot of favorable, favorable reviews of it. I do think that the Octava is somewhat noisy for its price point. The documentation claims 18 dB compared to the Asden at 12 dB, but I find that my Octava, my Octava at least, it does have a little bit of a background noise that I wouldn't expect at this price point. I also think it has its own sound character, which you can decide if you like. On the other hand, what is cool about this mic system is that it is a system. You can get other capsules, a cardioid capsule and an omnidirectional capsule and a 10 dB pad insert. Now, this is reminiscent of the DPA pencil condenser system with the interchangeable capsules, just at like one tenth the price. Next, let's compare a couple of Deity microphones. First, you're listening to the S-Mic 2S. This is a short shotgun and would be most comparable to the shorter 3500. Both have the wider super cardioid pattern too. The S-Mic 2S will run you about $320. And even though it's, it's quite dainty, it's, it's a 
it's only 85 grams and it's a full inch shorter than the short version of the 3500. But this mic is also quite solid and robust. And as I mentioned before, this mic will have a flatter response. So it will sound somewhat darker compared to the extra bright Asdens. So if you have a bright sibilant S sound, this might be a better choice for you. Moving on, now I've got the Deity S Mic 2 in the mix. Recall that I mentioned that the Asdens have that fairly prominent presence boost. Like the S Mic 2S that you just heard, the S Mic 2 frequency response is generally much flatter than the Asdens. It's one of the flatter shotguns that I'm aware of, so you should expect it to sound different. If you're looking for a shotgun mic for voiceover and you know you have a prominent or sharp S sound, you might put this mic on your radar because it's not boosted in frequencies that are problematic for your S. This mic is the longer counterpart in the pair of Deity mics. It's more comparable d dimensionally to the L version of the 3500 series, um, but it's got the wider super cardioid pattern like the, uh, the shorter version. The Deity S Mic 2 will run you about $425 to $430. Now I have the Rode NTG5 shotgun microphone installed. This microphone will run you about $500 at the time I'm making this video, on par with the other ones. But it does come with some additional accessories if you're looking to use your mic in a filmmaking scenario. The NTG5 comes with a pistol grip mount designed for a boom pole, and it comes with a, a dead cat furry windscreen for use um, outside in windy conditions. And these are all extra accessories that you'd have to buy for any of the other mics in our comparison. The frequency response chart shows a similar presence boost as the Asdens. However, it does roll the bass off a little bit earlier at 100 hertz, really illustrating that this microphone is really intended for outdoor use where wind noise could be an issue. This seems to do everything it can to reduce wind noise. I, I should also note that this microphone is super light, only 75 grams. Doesn't feel cheap in any way. It's just really light. And last up, we have the $1,000 Sennheiser MKH-416. Now, this microphone is nearly the double the cost of either of the Asdens. But this microphone has a reputation as one of the most popular microphones in voice work. And personally, I think that reputation is justified. It's a great sounding mic. But as we compare back and forth between these microphones... Consider what is different between them. And if you find that difference between them, if it's so vast that you feel that doubling your spending would be worth it. One place where I think the Sennheiser really shines is in the proximity effect. As you get up right close to it, I think it still sounds quite nice. We'll just do it as a comparison for the other ones. So I think uh, that as you get really close to it, I think the Sennheiser sounds quite nice, but it does have a fairly pronounced proximity effect. That proximity effect gives good authority and, and thickness to the voice. Some of the folks over on the, uh, on the Booth Junkie Discord would say that it's got a very pleasant sense of meat to it. The, four, the 416 is a, a workhorse microphone. It's uh, the workhorse of, of promo work, that, that big voice that you often find uh, announcing the shows in between programs during commercial breaks. Um, you see it a lot in documentary work. Um, you see it a lot in commercial work. Very, very popular microphone. But it is very expensive. It's, you're really thinking about just the, the difference in sound quality between the two because craftsmanship and build quality... There's barely any difference that I can detect between the Asdens and the Sennheiser. Just think about at double the price, are you getting such a significant difference in sound quality that you'd say, got to have the 416, got to have the 416. If you're buying it just for reputation, that's one thing. Just so you can say, yeah, I've got a 416. That's one thing. And you have to decide if that's the right decision to make for you. But if you're just purely going for sound quality, because the listener 
doesn't care what microphone you're using. They just care that it's clear and that you sound as good as you can sound. The 416 is, I don't know that I've ever been hired because I've got a 416. I don't know that I've ever been hired because I've got a U87. Nobody's ever said, well, he's got a U87, so we got to hire him. No. They just want to make sure that the that the sound is good enough, it's clear that you sound like you're in professional territory. It's going to be unlikely that somebody's going to say, oh, well, you're not using a 416. You're using an Asden or using, using a Deity or, or a Sheps or something like that. You're, you're, you're coming down to, do you like the sound of the 416 enough that it's worth double what you're paying or triple or quintuple or quadruple of, of some of these other mics that you have? Not knocking the 416. I love it. I've paid for it. I've gotten my money's worth out of it. But it was a hard road to get there. A lot of money to save up to get to a $1,000 microphone. When a $500 microphone can serve you just as well. Plenty of people are making plenty of money with microphones that cost less than $1,000. That's all I'm trying to say. That's all I'm trying to say. And that's all I have for you today. I hope that helps. I hope that I've given you a sense of where these Asden microphones fit. I hope I've given you a sense of if they might be right for you and the landscape of other shotgun microphones that are out there in various price points. I hope it helps. I hope it helps. So all I'm trying to do is just trying to help you. Now, go get yourself a microphone, maybe a shotgun microphone, for your less than ideal treated space or for just an additional mic for your locker or maybe as your first mic. But get yourself a microphone, any microphone, so you can get out there and you can record something amazing. Thanks. We'll talk to you next time. Take care.